So India has some elections coming up. April 6th. Flip over my notes. Damn headphones. <laughs> uh, India has some elections coming up. Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, uh, Puducherry. Um, you know, these are all states in India. April 6th, there will be an election. And, and if you're wondering, boy, Chris, this is the first I've heard of Indian elections. What's going on? The elections are in three weeks. You know, did they not tour around the country for a year and a half? Where are the commercials, Krish? What's what's uh, what's going on with uh, with the PACs? Did they talk about super PACs? Where are the attacks on all, uh, on on the uh, uh, on the opponents? Where where are my attack ads at? Uh, you know, how will we know if, if, if who's corrupt and who isn't if we don't uh, levy arbitrary claims of corruption and then spend four weeks talking about them on corporate media. Is this not a show? Uh, do, do people in India not care about how democracy works? Well, they do. That's why their elections aren't a year and a fucking half. 2020, the election cycle for 2020 started at the end of 2018 in America. That's insanity. In fucking sanity. This is the only country that does their elections the way that we do them because it's entertainment. It's not it's not democracy. It's it's basically uh, America's got president. Right. It's 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 the voice for uh, for for elected officials. It's a contest. It's it's all gamified in America, whereas in India, this is like serious shit. People actually take things seriously. I, I mean, are there ill informed people? Absolutely, of course there are. Is corporate media in India still a, a, an absolute shit show? Absolutely, of course it is. It's corporate media. They're not run by journalistic integrity. They're run by their advertisers. They're run by trying to turn a profit. That's what's that's what's going on. Now, the BJP is using uh, breadcrumbs as a way to. Uh, end these strikes, right? And they're and they're saying, well, we're allying with the U.S. Uh, to push back on China to help the working class, especially the Hindus in in this country against those dangerous Maoists, the Sikh separatists, the the anti nationalists, the oh, the scary Muslims in India. Uh, we're we're gonna ally with the United States, push back against China, and that's how we're gonna win. So you have to keep the BJP in power, uh, even though keeping the BJP in power especially in a state like Tamil Nadu, has led to, again, stagnant wages. Nobody's lives are getting improved under the BJP. And let's be clear, the opposite of the BJP, right? The BJP are like the Republicans of India. The Congress Party, which is like the Democrats of India, are no better, okay? They they push for neoliberalism as much as the BJP did, uh, but... but they are the ones that kind of opened the doors for the BJP to go down this road. I remember Lee Camp did a video about how uh, Obama just handed Donald Trump the dictator's toolkit, uh, you know, increased mass surveillance, increased drone warfare, uh, and the list goes on and on, right? And, and lack of environmental protections, uh, police brutality all went up during Obama's administration, and he handed the keys to that over to Donald Trump. That's basically what the, the Congress Party did to the BJP. They were so wildly ineffective as a, as, a, um, as a political party, and they spent so much time just enriching themselves and, and again, selling lies to the, to the uh, average Indian population that a populist like Modi, and I will say at the beginning when I was looking at Modi, it did seem like he was somebody, though politically I'd probably disagreed with, he was trying to do some positive things for the people of India. And he just seemed to have poor executions of these ideas, right? Uh, like he uh, got rid of the 500 and 1,000 rupee notes as a way to stop uh, the mafia from, uh, from laundering money in the country. Well, what's the problem with that? The problem with that is most of India is cash-based. Not a lot of people have a bank account. Uh, so they basically lost a fuck ton of money. 
He gave a short period of time for people to go find a, and open a bank account, which can take time, especially if you live in a rural community that doesn't have a bank and you have a day travel to go to uh, to the city. Hopefully, maybe you have family there. Maybe you don't. And you have to live, stay uh, overnight at some a shady hotel or something. Put your money in a bank and then, you know, and then figure out how to access that money uh, in a primarily cash based country. So. He didn't think about them. So then he just said, oh, free bank accounts for everybody. And we'll install ATMs. Uh, he wanted people to come out and vote. So he said that no community should uh, be without a polling station a mile from where they live. Right. So more polling stations, encouraging people, one vote, one person kind of thing. Uh, he he basically instated a, a um, pushback against the insurance companies, which India never had insurance companies. Like I never grew up with health insurance in India. We just went to the doctor when we were sick and then we would get a very reasonable bill. Um, you know, I never heard my parents talk about medical debt um, until we came to the States. Like that wasn't even a thought in our heads. Uh, so, you know, he created a system where people can just have health insurance, right? They can just go to the hospital without getting um, a large bill because he wanted a healthier country. He wanted digital literacy for everybody. So there were some positive things that he was trying to do. But more and more as he um, as he pushed his way from being a man of the people to being a politician in charge of the people, you can see more authoritarian rule. You can see more neoliberalism seeping in. You can see more uh, anti-worker laws being put into place. And again, had it not been the ineffectiveness of the Congress party two times in a row, we would, again, probably not see this. Like if the Democratic Party and the Congress party are really parties of the people, are really the the true oppositions to the, the BJP and the Republicans, then we would see a lot more pro-worker laws being put into place. We'd see a lot more, uh, a lot less inequality between the corporate elites and the average working class person. But we don't see that because, again, they're virtually the same party pushing for the same thing. It's just one side says it nicer than the other, you know. But here's where the, con the the issues with the Congress Party stem with these elections coming up is there are two different communist parties uh, that are that are kind of like uh, in presence in India. There is, I think, uh, like an actual legitimate communist party in India. They don't have anything to do with these elections right now. Uh, they're 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 two communist parties called the communist party of india one's more marxist related and one's more uh they're claiming it is more more communist related but in reality they're just social democrats they're not actual marxists they're not actual communists right they're using the strikes as a way to uh get more votes for the congress party so they have been big proponents of the strike this whole time uh, the the Marxist communists and the the Communist Party of India, they've been very supportive of the strikes, and now they're saying, "Well, we're supportive of the strikes," and the Congress Party, who is backing us up as a bigger organization, are also supportive of the strikes. So you guys should vote for the Congress Party, and if you don't vote for the Congress Party, well, then the BJP is going to win. You know, it's it's sort of the same narrative that you hear in America when it comes to the duopoly, which is, oh, if you don't vote for uh, the Democrats, well, the Republicans are going to win. You know, and it's not one or the other. Very, I mean, very clearly you can see it's not one or the other. The farmers probably don't want the Congress party in, in place because the Congress party had decades to help them out and they never fucking did. And they believed in the BJP and the reason why they're striking against the BJP is because they believed in the BJP and now the BJP has let them down. Like these smaller parties advocating for the bigger parties um, because there are, especially in Tamil Nadu, there's, there's a few smaller parties uh, that are at play here, but they're not particularly, it doesn't seem like they're putting up their own candidates. It seems like they are endorsing um, other candidates like the like BJP candidates and Congress Party candidates. This would be like if the Green Party suddenly decided to back the Democrats. 
it doesn't make any sense. You're supposed to be an alternate to the corporate parties. You're supposed to be an alternate thought to what you know to to what's already at place, and they're not. They're they're failing right now in India. Uh, the only one that's popped up is this weirdly nationalist party called We Tamil Party, and they basically want uh, somebody um, that speaks Tamil to be in charge of Tamil Nadu. Right. By the way, that's where my ancestry is from. I speak Tamil. That's that's my uh, 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 language that I, like my home language, I guess, would be what it's called. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that that's I, I, I know that language. Uh, it's a very difficult language to learn. Uh, there are certain sounds that if you're not used to making since you were born are really, really hard to learn. Um and uh, so, so to have have this party come out and say, well, the only person that can really help uh, the millions are is somebody that speaks Tamil. So we need to have a Tamil nationalist in in a position of power. Again, it's like, why are we? It's getting smaller, right? The the, the levels of nationalism are getting smaller, and in a country like India, uh, it's down to the language. Like we're we're finding. We're grasping at straws on how to divide people. It's this this um, this pro Tamil party is kind of like the spake English of like political parties in India, right? Like if somebody in America ran on a platform that was just spake English, this America you gotta speak English if at that. That ideology became a political party. That's what I see this We Tamil Party to be. Uh, it's incredibly, incredibly silly, and it makes virtually no sense here. But like I mentioned, workers in Tamil Nadu have been pushing back for the last three years. There have been major strikes that have happened all across that state, and all of the workers have uh, have a similar demand which is better pay and better conditions and better hours right we just want to be taken care of we want to be able to work the amount of hours that we work and we want to be paid a decent wage so we can go home and take care of our families and have some recreational time right uh, you know this is something that is never really considered uh, especially in uh, when we talk about capitalism is uh, the need for recreation the need to relax the need for privacy so you can just be with yourself and chill the fuck out and enjoy doing something that you just enjoy, right? Uh, even this, right? Like, even if you do something that you're very excited about doing, even if you do something that you love doing more than anything in the world, right? I love doing this a lot. I'm, I'm a big, I'm, 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 I'm a huge creative person. So I, I wanted to make my creativity my job. But that doesn't mean that just because I enjoy what I'm doing doesn't mean that I don't need leisure activities i don't need downtime right i don't need to just get a little stoned and watch some fucking cartoons every once in a while because that's my downtime that's how i recharge that's how i you know get my head back in order people need that that's a necessity say so, you know psychologists have proven that that's a necessity but in capitalism it's not seen as a necessity so when you say like oh man i wish uh, I had enough of an income where I can put food on the table, pay my bills, uh, keep up on rent, but also go to play laser tag once a month. People go, oh, look at this. This is you're just a fucking freeloader. That's all you are. And it's like, no, maybe laser tag is a way this person blows off steam and gets their fucking head right. I do again, listening to music is a, a big way that I just get my head right. Going for walks, which obviously can't do because it's wintertime. Uh, or or exercising and things like those are the ways that I get my head right. And if I don't take the time out to do them, but if, when I'm taking the time out to do them, I'm not creating stuff. I'm not working on my Patreon. But I shouldn't have to work 100% of the time. But in capitalism, that's what it wants. So these folks are basically saying we want to be able to earn enough money so we can pay our bills and also have recreation time. For three years, that's been happening in Tamil Nadu. There's been strike after strike after strike. And for three years, the BJP has ignored it. So it's fallen on deaf ears. So now we finally have a strike that is making an impact, that is forcing the BJP to fucking pay attention.
But the reason why the BJP is able to do any of this stuff, again, goes back to the fact that the Congress Party has been so fucking ineffective, wildly ineffective. And they made these promises and they didn't keep their promises. Sound familiar? Sound familiar like a party that claims it's the liberal party, that it's the progressive party, starts making a bunch of promises and then just doesn't fucking keep up on them. So then it gives this open fucking uh, this, this open opportunity for a right wing populist to come in and say, hey, look at how badly these guys fucked up. It's because of this and this and this. And I will fucking make sure that the working class of this country are taken care of. Sound familiar? I mean, I India is 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 maybe 10 years behind in terms of. Uh, new liberal politics than America is. But a lot of the, the ways that they're dealing with this are ways that I think America can learn how to deal with it and implement those rules here so we can push back against, you know, the Democratic Party's neoliberalism. And these elections in India uh, are going to be determined by by the farmer strike, by what happens with the farmer strike. How are these parties going to deal with the farmer strike? Right. So so if the BJP is going to say, well, we want you to take all this shit off the table and let us pass our uh, our our, our anti-worker laws without any kind of question. Well, nobody's going to vote for your fucking authoritarian bullshit party. If the Congress party comes out backed by these these fake progressives, these social Democrats, because social Democrats always fall in line with the, the liberal capitalists, these social Democrats come into play. Right. The, claiming they're Marxists, claiming they're communists. And they're saying, hey, we support the strike. But the Congress Party is the one that's really going to save us. And the Congress Party doesn't have a plan to uh, keep the, the, the minimum support pricing in place to help the farmers out. Well, the farmers ain't going to fucking buy that shit either. Right. So what, what India also needs, much like America, is a viable third party is a, a more than just a third party. We need multiple parties that legitimately represent the beliefs of the people right and again it's it's a total restructuring of the political system in and of itself we're talking about a major paradigm shift and those strikes can cause that it can cause the jay-z chain effects uh to do that That's, which is why it's important to support those strikes which is why it's important to push back against these sort of neoliberal economic policies so uh, let's look at a few context co context comments. Uh, Holly, uh, any country has fairer elections than the U.S.? A lot of countries do, yeah, especially countries that America shits on, like Venezuela, uh, like one of the best elections in the world. Elect International election observers have said that that's one of the best election systems. And what do we do? We claim their president is illegitimate uh, and so on and so forth. Um incentives that's what the congress party is giving them incentives uh we're incentivizing you to vote for us by putting these social democrats and and fake marxists and fake uh communists in in play to to essentially campaign for them and say hey you should vote for us because we're um we're awesome we're the yeah as holly points out the lesser evil right <laughs> that's what the that's what they're claiming it is but again that's the back and forth that we go to right we have a, a right wing populist that's awful and isn't really a populist, uses the same sort of xenophobic hate that the, the right wingers have used forever just so we can get this fucking neoliberal president that comes in and says, I'm microscopically better than this other person. Right. And it's just like it's and then the cycle starts over where this person is microscopically better. People's lives don't improve, but they're nicer about saying that they're racist. So then we then the cycle starts over. Then you, you build back up to having another populist in another 10 years. Right. That's the only thing that the lesser evil argument brings in. It's just this cycle of bullshit. And, and the, the, they keep playing this game over and over again. Dora, good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Spain is launching a four-day work week for mental health purposes. Yeah. Um, you know, I think in a lot of respects, people don't need to work more than 30 hours in a week. I would love to fucking have a 30-hour week. Seriously, I would love to have a 30-hour week. Um, I, you know, this week is going to kind of be a little bit of a shit show, as, as I mentioned at, at the very top of the stream, because my Friday has... Uh, a lot going on, but Friday afternoons starting at four o'clock till about six when my girlfriend comes home, that's just my time. 
I've kind of had to carve that out for myself, right? Where I need to recharge. I just want to sit. I want to listen to music. I want to, you know, read something that I'm uh, for just for me for fun. I want to watch an anime that I like, but we don't have that in our society. We have the weekend, but what do we do on the weekends? We got to take care of shit around the house, right? We got to, we got to go grocery shopping and we got to take care of the car. If you have kids, that's when you do shit for the kids, which is like, where do you get the time to just be you just for yourself to recharge where it's like you don't have to think about bills. You don't have to think about the kids. You don't have to think about what's going on with your car. Very little of that happens in America. So, yeah, I, I hope I hope uh, this this is a success and I hope that they don't uh, fucking get bail on it <laughs> in like two years. Uh, and go back to their bullshit capitalist way of doing things. So, yeah, thank you for pointing that out. And it's very good to see you. Uh, <laughs> Josh over on Rockman says, preach it, Chris. <laughs> thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. Fred, good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, presence in India sounds uh, like more fun. Presence in India. You're talking about like gifts in India? <laughs> or or the or the actual present in India? Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do... Uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.